In this video, I'm going to be going over a problem on how to find equivalent resistance when you have open and short resistors in your circuit. The big rule to keep in mind for this kind of a problem is that if there is no current, you ignore the resistor. So let's talk about the cases where you would have no current for a resistor. The first is in the case of a short circuit. So if we think about Ohm's law, we have I is equal to V plus minus V minus divided by the resistance. And this would be for a resistor where you have a current going through it. And this would be V plus, this is V minus, and this is the resistance R. If V plus and V minus are equivalent, that would subtract to zero and you would get no current. So in the case of a short circuit, what happens is you have a resistor, but there's a wire connecting one end to the other. And if you have a wire connecting one end to the other of your resistor, there can't be a potential difference across your wire. Both V plus and V minus would be the same and all the current would go around your resistor and the resistor would become irrelevant. This is the case of a short. So in the case of an open, there's no current flowing through the resistor because there's nowhere to go on the other side. One way you could think about it is if you had a voltage source and you had a resistor and nothing was connected to the other side. And if you were to do a KCL here, there's no current coming out of your circuit. So if there's no current coming out of that node, then there can't be any current going into the node, and you know that the current through the resistor is equal to zero. And again, you're able to ignore this. Now that we've gone over the rules of open and short circuits, the last thing we need to consider before we begin the problem is where we're finding the resistance with respect to. In this case, we're given terminal pairs A and B, and this is where we're looking at the resistance from. So though there's nothing connected there, we're trying to figure out what resistance we would see if we had a voltage or current source connected to that terminal pair A and B. Now that we know where we're analyzing the circuit with respect to, we can begin with the simplification. The first thing I notice is this 20 ohm resistor on the right. No current can be coming out of this node because there's no circuit for that current to flow through. So that tells me that there's no current in the resistor and we can safely ignore the 20 ohm resistor. The next thing I see is we have the five and the seven ohm resistors right here. And these two are connected together, so it's tempting to say we're going to treat these as a parallel set of resistors. However, we do have a wire connecting these two together on both sides. So that means there's no potential difference across them, and these two are not going to contribute to our circuit. This wire is going to stay, but those two resistors are not going to be relevant. So we can get rid of these two. And the next thing I see is we have this 10 ohm resistor over on the left. And again, there's no place for the current to go. So there's no current that's going to be flowing through that resistor and we can safely ignore it from our equivalent resistance. So at this point, I'm going to redraw the circuit with the simplifications that I've made so far. So I've gone ahead and redrawn the circuit up to this point. And we notice that the 36 ohm resistor and the 18 ohm resistor share the same potential on both sides. So that means that these two are going to be in parallel. So the equivalent resistance equation for these two resistors is going to be our total is equal to 36 multiplied by 18 divided by 36 plus 18. And this is equal to 12. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these two and draw in my equivalent. So our circuit looks like this. And these two are going to share the same current. If a current was flowing through the one, it would have to continue on through the other. That means that these two are going to be in series, and to find the equivalent resistance between the 12 and the 16, we just have to add them up, and that's going to give us an equivalent resistance between these two of 18 ohms. So now our circuit looks like this, and these two share the same potential on both sides. So we have to use the parallel equation again, and it turns out 36 and 18 are the same two numbers we used before, so that's going to work out to 12 as well. So the final answer for this problem is that the equivalent resistance is going to be 12 ohms from point A to point B.